the priorities of top-down economies are usually for just preserving the power of leadership. So there's been quite a bit of work on the importance of what we could call selection versus you know, the, the difference in business between how important it is for firms to improve versus just for better firms to survive. So we can think of this as you know, the problems of actual conscious improvement versus attrition. So and a big result of this is that a very large share of economic progress doesn't come from firms learning to improve. It comes from incompetent firms going out of business and shrinking and more competent firms uh, expanding and uh, surviving or surviving and expanding. And once you realize this is a general pattern, then it makes sense that top-down economies are going to have very poor productivity growth because they're just set up to not allow this kind of attrition, just to say, look, the government runs it, and if it's not working, then we're going to put more money behind it as much as it takes in order to make it work. Instead of saying, maybe you're just not good at your job and you should let someone else do it, but if it's top-down, there is no one else. You have excluded them by definition. It is exactly the same logic as technological progress. So, well, on the one hand, the internet went and made it easier to go and handle travel. On the other hand, it destroyed the jobs of almost every travel agent in the world. Some good, some bad, what can we say? What we can say is definitely good overall because the production of the world dramatically increased. And if any were wondering, like, but what about the people that who are out of work? Guess what? They find something else to do, almost always. Of course, if you were two months away from retirement, then probably you don't find another thing to do. And if that was your retirement plan was selling your travel agency to somebody else, then your hopes have been dashed. But a society that focuses on no one can ever lose from any kind of change is going to be an impoverished, miserable, <laughs> and stagnant country. And in fact, this is a really good way of thinking about one of the main problems of communism. So there's American social scientist John Haltewanger who's analyzed why does productivity grow? And he looks at very detailed information from millions of firms. The punchline of his work is that the main reason why, sometimes the only reason why productivity grows is attrition. The really good firms survive and grow, the bad firms shrink and die. That's one of the main, in fact, it is the main source of economic progress in the world is the good firms expanding and surviving, the bad firms shrinking and dying. When I read this research, I actually asked Haltewanger, so this seems like a really good explanation for what was so wrong with communism. Because under communism, government firms don't die. You know, there's, one, there's a government monopoly, if it doesn't do well, they just put more resources into it and you see what happens.